Hello and welcome back, or just welcome if you've not been here before. In today's video, I'm going to look at engraving a simple flower shape, specifically a daisy. Daisies are quite a good one to work with. They're not too complicated a shape. And actually lots of different flowers have got a similar structure to a daisy. So if you learn to engrave a daisy, you can adapt that for a number of flowers. So without further ado, let's get on and look at doing the engraving. For today's video, I'm going to have a look at engraving a daisy shape onto a large glass, this gin glass. As for previous videos in this series, there is a template attached in the description. And if you click on that, you should be able to download a PDF with the daisy template on it. Now I've put it on there in a range of different sizes so that you might be able to find one that suits for you. A daisy is quite a useful flower to learn to engrave because there are a lot of other flowers that have a similar structure. Things like an ox eye daisy or even a gerbera. So it's quite a good place to start. Now obviously you could engrave a simple daisy shape just by making a circle in the middle and then a ring of petals around the outside. This is a very simple shape and it's very pretty. You can use it to embellish a lot of things, um, maybe make a border with little daisy flowers like that. But for this video, I've gone for a slightly more naturalistic style of daisy. So something that's a bit more of a stretch, a little bit more complex for you to engrave, but hopefully still simple enough for you to enjoy. And if you think it's a little bit too simple, there is a second template in there, but I'll talk more about that at the end. Now, normally at this stage, I would go and find one of whatever we're going to be engraving and show it to you, but this is November in the northeast of Scotland, so there's not much growing that I can show you just now. However, I've drawn out a daisy template for you to use. I am going to put this daisy image onto this nice big glass here and I think looking at it the size I'm going to pick I'll probably do this one I think that'll work quite well for me so to transfer it over I'm just going to cut out the one I want And then when I've got that done, I'll take a piece of sticky tape and fasten it in here. Now, I don't know if you can see, but because the glass is curved and the paper is flat, it wants to not sit in there very nicely. If that is a problem, particularly, particularly if you have a smaller glass or a more curved glass, one thing you can do or put little slits in here and there or cut away more of the surrounding paper and then you might be able to get it to fit in a little bit better but uh, it's not a big problem for me with this one so I'll just I think I think put it in there like that you've seen me before I usually at the start of the engraving go over the lines a little bit with this little white stone it's not engraving deeply at all, but it does mark these lines a little bit more permanently onto the glass. You probably can't see it here because it's on the white background. But I'm just working my way around all of the petals. And once I've got them all on and I take off the template from the back, you can see that the lines show up much more clearly and that makes it a lot easier for me to engrave the petals. I should say as well, I've recorded all of this at double speed, so I don't actually engrave quite this quickly. 
Now I've still kept the white stone in the flexi, flexi shaft here. And the first petals I'm going to engrave using just this white stone are the ones that would be furthest away from us, the ones that would be lying behind other petals in the flower. The reason I'm using the white stone is I really want these to be engraved to be very shallow on the glass. I don't want to cut away much glass for these ones at all because that's part of what will make them look further away from us in the engraving. And the other reason is I'm also going to want these to be shaded, quite heavily shaded. So the white stone gives a very smooth engraving which polishes to give a very dark shade. So all I'm going to do is go around and pick out those petals that I think are going to be furthest back and just pick them out quickly with the white Arkansas stone here. Once I've got those all done, I can start looking to engrave the next layer of petals. And in fact, I'll be doing most of the rest of the petals just now. And what I've put into the drill, into the flexi shaft at the moment, is a very small green silicon carbide stone. I'm not using diamond at this stage because this glass is not very thick. And I do not want to cut too deeply into the glass. But the green silicon carbide is just that little bit more abrasive than the white stone. So it cuts a little bit deeper and will make these petals look as if they're lying on top of the ones that we've already engraved. If you've ever done any painting, you'll know that the brush stroke is very important in defining the shape that you're painting. And it's the same in engraving. These petals are long and thin. And if you see an original, an actual daisy, they are, there are like striations or lines, ridges down them. So when I'm engraving them, I'm trying to make sure that I engrave along the length of each petal. That will leave tiny little engraving marks, which you will hardly see, but will help to make the petal look a little bit more realistic. Now, it's going to take me a little while, even at double speed, to get round all these petals. But that's all I'll do at this stage, is keep going round and filling them all in. Once I've been over all these petals with the green silicon carbide stone, I like to get a polishing rubber. This is a black bullet shaped rubber and go over the petals that lie at the back 
the ones that we originally did with a white stone and any of the bits that are going to be in shade so the shade is often in, in this case in, in the middle section of the flower now this isn't the final polish that I'm going to give to this engraving but adding a little bit of shade at this stage helps me to see the shape of the engraving so it only takes a few seconds to just go over it quickly with the black rubber and once I have done that quick initial shading, I like to fill in the central section. I find it quite difficult to engrave if there's still a large unengraved area. So this is a much larger green silicon carbide stone. And hopefully you can see I'm not trying to get a smooth finish over this central area. It's actually going to be quite textured at the end. So I'm just almost dabbing the stone down to give a slightly textured look to the central area. We'll be coming back to increase that texture later. Now what I like to do is I've, I've turned on the water here because I'm using a diamond. The petals on a daisy are not flat. So at this stage of the engraving, I'm using this very small one and a half millimeter, maybe spherical diamond bar to pick out the tips and the edges of each petal because they curl up, they're curling up towards us and they catch the light. I also said before, I think that petals have almost ridges down them. So for each petal, I'm also running the bar down the middle of each petal to create that little ridge. And I will repeat this for all of the, certainly all of the forward layer of petals and actually the tips and edges of the ones at the back as well. I will just go over them quickly with the spherical diamond bar. This little petal at the front is the one that actually sticks out most towards us. So I am just engraving that just a little touch deeper. Again, not too deep because the glass isn't particularly thick.
Once I've been round the edges of all of the petals, I'm using the same spherical diamond bar to add some additional texture to the middle of the flower. You don't have to be very fussy about where these little dots are. I'm just pressing down gently with the spherical bar to create little indentations. Um, they do have quite a geometric pattern in real life, so try to space them fairly evenly, but the actual position doesn't really matter. And once I'm happy that I've got all those little indentations in the middle, I've changed up to a much larger diamond bar. This would be about a five millimeter, maybe. And I'm using that to complete the stem on the daisy. Now that's most of the work done that I need to do with those diamond burrs wet and I'm changing back to another polishing rubber. Now this one is a little black um, pencil rubber and I'm going to use that to do the final polishing of the flower. So the, the lower area around the centre and then from the middle of each petal out towards the tip. I'm hoping you'll be able to see. If Do you remember when I was using the diamond bar on the petal, I said I engraved the edges, the tips, and then down the centre of each petal to create little ridges. I'm hoping you'll see that the higher unengraved bits, the bits that I didn't touch with the diamond bar, actually polish out and become quite dark doing that. With the polishing almost finished, I've moved back to, this is a very tiny little um, 0.8 millimeter, I think it is, round diamond bar. And I'm just using that, working dry with no water at this stage, I'm using that to just put in the very final highlights on each petal. And I also at this stage go around the edges and make sure that everything's nice and crisp and showing up the way I want and that there are no little chipped edges or sparkly bits that I don't like the look of. So this is a chance to just make sure that the finish on the petals is just the way you want it to be. And I'm doing the same down the stem, just making sure that the edges of the stem are nice and crisp and clear. And I realise at this point that I forgot to add a little bit of shade to just the end of the stem where it starts to disappear underneath the flower. So I've swapped back to the uh, pencil rubber and I've just added a little bit of shade to that area. We have a finished glass with a little daisy pattern on it. And it's really quite pretty. For such a simple shape of flower, it's very light and fresh looking. And it makes a nice little pattern to use. I did say at the start, there's a second template attached to the description and there is. It is also daisies but I've put two of them in there, overlapping each other slightly. Now that's obviously a little bit more complicated to engrave, but if you think that you are enjoying the process of doing the daisies and you want to just push yourself a little bit further, that second template will let you try something, again, a little bit more complicated. The process of engraving is exactly the same as for the single daisy. It's just that you know, there's a bit more layering involved. The second daisy has to lie behind the first one. So if you're feeling brave and confident, then download that one and give it a go as well. But anyway, that's enough for today. And I hope that you'll come back and watch my next video. Thank you.